Ukrainian fighters claim to have used anti-ship missiles against Russia's flagship vessel in the Black Sea. Russian state media dispute that, saying the guided missile cruiser was abandoned after a fire detonated ammunition on board. CNN can't verify either of those claims. But Claire's been going through all of these claims and counterclaims. What we do know is that this flagship um, is out of action which is significant in itself. Yeah, that appears to be something that both sides uh, agree on. There's been significant damage. Uh, the Russian uh, uh, state media, according uh, so it's citing the defence ministry, saying it's been evacuated, around 500 uh, crew. So this is bad news for Russia, whatever the circumstances. This is the, the flagship of their Black Sea fleet. That's the, the, the area sort of uh, just south of Crimea, critical uh, sort of a vantage point for Russia in this war. Uh, and it's, it's damaging to their, to their military capacity there, as well as their reputation, which, as you know, has already taken a hit here. But, but conflicting reports, and, and we have to be very careful because we haven't been able to verify the weather in the region has been bad enough that we haven't been able to pull up satellite mm. images to even confirm the location uh, of this ship. So conflicting reports, and in an area where, where Russia is very likely to deny if it was a missile hit, and mm. Ukraine would be very likely to, to make a lot of this, given that it would be such a military coup for them to hit the flagship of the Black Sea Fleet. And it does benefit Ukraine because perhaps those ships or that fleet will be more apprehensive about going close in now if the Ukrainians are correct, so that we have to operate from further out to sea. Yeah, I think there's two parts to that. One, yes, it was certainly, according to experts, change the behaviour of Russia's fleet in the Black Sea if the Ukrainian side has proved right and this was a missile strike. It would show their capability. The, the missiles that they say, according to the, the state administrator of the Odessa region, that they hit the ship with Neptunes are Ukrainian-developed missiles. They came into service last year. And this, according to experts, would be the, the first known use of them. So that would certainly be a deterrent uh, for Russia. But on the other side, this would be an escalation. If, if Ukraine did hit Russia's flagship vessel in the Black Sea, that would be interpreted by Russia as an escalation. And I think that would create a dangerous moment, potentially, as Russia amasses its forces for, for an offensive in the Donbass. And Russia's talked about um, going for the power centres if, you, if uh, um, the Ukrainians fire into Russian territory. They could argue that a Russian ship is Russian territory and that might make Kyiv vulnerable again, do you think? You know, that's exactly what... I mean, I... I think the situation is now. Russia has said uh, in, the, in the last day that they could hit what they call decision-making centres uh, in Kiev if they, if they see what they call sabotage and strikes on the territory of the Russian Federation. There have been reports of that from the Ukrainian side. Uh, and we had thought that Kiev was sort of not part of the, the, the new strategy of Russia, but they have now put it back on the table. And I think, look, a warship with 500 crew is seen mm. as a sort of sovereign island, essentially, uh, of Russia, and it could be seen by Russia as an excuse to, to escalate in a different region. Okay, Claire, we'll keep watching it. Thank you. One of Vladimir Putin's goals has always been to keep NATO expansion in check, but his invasion of Ukraine may have the opposite effect. It could be just weeks until Sweden and Finland decide whether to apply for membership in the alliance. Finland's prime minister says the war in Ukraine prompted the renewed talks. The move is especially important because of if both countries become members, the length of the border of NATO territories in Eastern Europe would nearly double. Poland is currently home to the largest population of refugees from Ukraine. More than half of the 4.6 million fleeing Russia's ongoing war have crossed into Poland. Aid groups and volunteers have been standing by at the borders, ready to, to provide assistance, shelter and protection. CNN Salma Abd Abdelaziz, live near the Ukraine-Poland border. We've been checking with you every day. Uh, what's the latest concern and processing there. So you have over two and a half million refugees, Max, of course, that have crossed into this country. And yes, we've started to see that flow of human beings slow down at the border. But now comes the tough part. Now comes the long term planning of how you provide for these many, many families. There's no one central point here. There's no huge refugee camp. Instead, you have two and a half million people who've essentially dissipated into the Polish population. And yesterday, uh, Polish President Duda was in Ukraine to lend his support, of course, to President Zelensky, but also to highlight uh, just how much the fate of these two nations is tied now, Max. Take a listen. This is not war. This is terrorism. If someone sends planes and soldiers to bomb residential areas and kill civilians, that is not war. It is cruelty, banditry, terrorism. That is the face of Russian aggression against Ukraine. We must never come to terms with. 
Now, what happens inside Ukraine deeply impacts what happens inside Poland, of course. Those families that flee, when we hear of areas that are heavy hit, that are impacted, it might take a few days, it might take some time before corridors are opened up, but oftentimes those families wind up here, Max, and they need support, they need help, they need a place to sleep. And you are here, again, on the border of NATO. Poland really feels like it's on the front line of this conflict.